repeat successful actions, <laughs> get feedback from people who are further ahead than you, uh, expand the time horizon that you measure your output on, but shrink the time horizon that you measure your inputs on. So measure what you do today faster, but measure what happens from what you did today longer. I optimize for progress. I'm competing against guys who've been doing it for 10 years. Of course they're better than I am. Why would I expect to beat those guys, right? But I'd like to be better in a month or two than I am now. And as long as I have a path towards that, I'm satisfied. And I will continue on that path because if I can draw the line between now and 20 years from now, then it is a good outcome. And I think that that being able to draw the line and say like, I just wanna see that I'm getting better, that's all that people, in my opinion, should focus on. Now, if you're not getting better and you're doing the inputs and you're putting the real time into the thing, then it means you need somebody to give you better feedback. So if you've been on a, on a treadmill and and you, and you see 30 minutes, right? And then you and then you're like you you get five minutes in and you're like, okay, only five more five minute chunks, right? That is, in a nutshell, what an expert does when they approach a project. They don't try and think I'm going to run 26 miles, right? If they're running the marathon, they say, how do I break this into a chunk that I can manage, right? And then what they do is they create more ways to win. And so in those two years. It wasn't like I just sat and suffered for two years and then the book's gonna come out, right? I was, I would have many, many victories along the way that would happen of like, oh, we just destructed this whole, this chapter, I just rewrote it again and it's killer. Or I just got this beautiful visual that just completely explains this thing with three, three shapes and it just, you know, it, it explains the whole concept, right? And so you get these little mini reinforcers and then you have the long loop of reinforcement that is for me that I have now learned over and over again is that the longer the more time I put into something, not necessarily longer, but the more time I put into something, the, the fact that time elapses is secondary. The more time I put into something, the better it is. The work needs doing. It's just like there's no way around it. The, like it just has to be confronted. And I think it just like, it just comes down to that is you just have to confront the work. And a lot of people put a lot of extra things between them and the work that they try and romanticize. They try and create superstitions around it. They have all these fancy rain dances that they do. But like at the end of the day, the work doesn't care who you are. It just cares that it gets done. You can become proficient in any skill in about 20 hours. So playing the piano, you know, riding a bike, whatever, 20 hours of concentrated effort gets you proficient. It's the largest gain in skill improvement is 20 hours of concentrated effort. The problem is, is that people will wait a decade to start the first hour. And so you'd be amazed at how much progress you can make if you cut down the time between when you acknowledge the work and when you start doing the work. The, the time delay that people talk about, like myself included when I'm trying, like this is where nuance of advice comes in, right? Where it's like, I tell people, hey, I want you to do 100 reps every day. I don't want you to do the same 100 reps every day. I want you to get better with all the reps. And if you haven't looked at the end of the day and said, what could I do better? How could I improve? And if you don't have somebody on the outside eyes being like, hey, you stumbled here on this call, or hey, when they said this, let's drill this. Let's let's do this a couple of times. That's how you get better, right? And so you have to be willing to do the work and get the feedback to improve. Like the work works on you more than you work on it. And I think that's the piece that people miss. Like my prescription, like of doctor money, um, of, of working is for the, for the person's skills, not because I care about the fact that you made 10,000 phone calls. I care about the fact that you got better 10,000 times. The people who are doing way better than you are just working so much harder. And the thing is that people think that someone's working like two times as hard or three times as hard because we tend to think in increments. We're like, okay, well, I work, I work this much. Someone must be doing twice as much work, but it's not even close to that. These guys are doing like literally a hundred times the work. And it's not only that, they have a team of 10 people spending four weeks to prepare one 15 minute video. Like the order of magnitude in terms of effort there, do you multiply it by 10 times, times 12 hours a day, times four weeks, all of a sudden you really are at a thousand times the work, 1500 times the work to create, to be fair, an outcome that is 1500 or 10,000 times better than the average YouTube video or whatever it is that you're making. And obviously I'm just using this as a content example, but it, it applies to anything, it applies to sales meetings, it applies to how you prep for a date, it applies to how you meet the parents or the in-laws. I think if you like do consulting or you do some sort of work where you do the same thing over and over again, like you can have like a four to one ratio. If I go into a meeting and it's a 60 minute meeting, you can take 15 minutes before you get into the meeting. And I think like a four to one ratio is really, or one to four ratio. Like if it's a eight hour day, spending two hours, if it's a 60 minute meeting, spending 15 minutes, if a 20 minute meeting, spending five minutes before you get on, um, will make the 20 minutes two, three times more effective 
by just having that little bit of block to say, who's on this meeting? What's the background of this? What's the agenda? What problem are we trying to solve? It just, it just absolutely focuses you and makes you a driver in the meeting. My entire goal of this right now is to reset your expectations of the amount of preparation that it takes to be good. Because it's so easy it's like mediocrity is, is the is, is so easy to do because you just do something and hey, anything's better than nothing. So if you're doing nothing, then absolutely start. But what happens is people are like, why isn't it working for me? And it's not working for you because you're not working nearly as much as you th as what is required to get that level of output. One of the for sure ways to get better at a skill is surround yourself with people who already have that skill who are ahead of you. And so that's why joining a championship team is one of the be best things you can do to understand what is required to win. When you realize how much work it takes to get good, you realize how few things you can get good at. And that's where the focus becomes so important because the only way to get that good is to do a few things. And so that's where the strategy of picking or prioritizing the things that you want to get good at becomes more important because you just can't do 100 times the work on 100 different things. You're underprepared most of the time, most of you. And I'm saying this because I talk to you guys a lot. Five minutes of prep for a 60 minute meeting will do more than trying to razzle dazzle your way through with your words once you're on. We all know how to do stuff and all we have to do is package the thing that we're doing. And I think the big problem is that people expect that they're gonna have a perfect business. But if you look at the track record of all, of, I can't think of an entrepreneur besides Jeff Bezos, who's a freak of nature, whose first business becomes the most valuable business in the world is most people have a, a graveyard of failures behind them. And so, the idea is you start not with the intent of saying this is going to be the one thing I'm going to do for the rest of my life, which is the fallacy that employees have, uh, that whatever they pick is me, the thing they're going to do for the rest of their lives. When in reality, it's I just have to do a thing that I'm good enough at that I can learn the game. And the thing is, once you start taking steps, the, the next step becomes illuminated. You trying to think 100 steps into the future when you have no context is, is irrelevant. The conviction is the number one secret ingredient to sales, is that you actually have mm -hmm. to believe. And the thing is, is the first person you always have to sell is yourself. And most people actually aren't sold, number one. Number two is that conviction itself is not binary. It's not do you believe or do you not believe, it's how much do you believe. Because conviction is measurable and it is changeable, it's also something that you can work on and you can outwork your self-doubt. I think Sun Tzu said, every battle is won before the battle begins. On the longest time horizon, the only thing that matters is product, which is how good is the thing that you're ultimately given in exchange for money? And do people feel like they're always on the better end of the deal? In order to build something really big, you need some. You need to be able to get credit for work you did over time. And that means that I want to get paid today for work I did three years ago. And the only way to do that is to have a product that somebody I sold three years ago is either still using today or it still at least has positive things to say about me today. Otherwise, you're basically always hunting every month to find your next nut or whatever it is. If you work every hour of the day and you're not making more money, you're working on the wrong stuff.